Welcome to this BioFMQ tutorial. My name is Hannah and I will show you today how you can import custom TIFF files into the correct format for BioFMQ. In previous tutorials we have already learned how to import microscopy files into the correct format, for example ND2 files or CZI files. However, in some cases you might have TIFF files from your experiment or you might want to export your microscopy files into the TIFF format first because you need them for another course or you want to have an additional look at it. I have again prepared a directory. Here we have another example ND2 file, which I have opened in the NIS viewer, which is a free program. To show you what it looks like, we have a Z stack, we have two positions, and we have several time points. Now I could export this file by clicking on File, Export ND Document, and then choosing the tagged image format as well as the directory. I should also um, do a mono image for each channel as well as keep the bit depth for BioFMQ. If I now click on Export, a file will be generated or all the TIFF files will be generated. I already did this and this is the resulting directory here. So we can see that the exported TIFF files have a naming scheme to them. They are called example ND2, which is a file name, then T for time, X, Y for position, Z for the set position, as well as Z for the channel. What happens if we want to import these files into BioFMQ? Let's load the directory. We click on Browse, we navigate to the directory, and click Select Folder. You can see that I'm getting a different view here. These are all the files. However, since they have not been imported yet, you can see that they are grayed out. On the right side here, I have the Import Custom TIFF view where I can choose my prefixes for the metadata information as well as validate my file name to see how the metadata is read from my files. So in this case, the position, I want to put x, y. For the channel, I want to put c. For the time, I want to put t. And for z, I want to put z. I can now validate either all files at once or a single file name that I type up here. So for example, I could see if my example ND2 file at time point one, position one, Z position one and channel one would be correctly read. You can see here that all of the four metadata informations have been read from the file. Now we can click on validate all files and we can see that now I get a list of all of the file names and for each of the file names, the program tells me which position, which channel, which time, and which set position has been read from the file. Now that I have done that, I can import these files into the BioFMQ format. When I click Import Custom Tips, the import begins. We can check what's happening in my directory. I can see now that a new folder has been generated called export NAS position one. There are two positions in this particular file. So a second folder will be generated. And in this folder here, you can see now that images as well as metadata files are being generated like before. If I open one of those files in Earfund view and scroll through it, I can see that this is now a Z stack of a biofilm. So now we will wait until the import has finished. Once the import is finished, we again get this pop up where we get a list of the different folders that have been generated. And we can choose to switch to the first directory or stay in the current directory. Let's have a look at the first directory in the list. You can see that the images appear in the file list here.
I can switch fluorescent channels, so both fluorescent channels have been assigned correctly. And if I want to look at the second position, I could switch directories to the second position. Now there might be special cases where you already have 3D TIFF stacks, where the third dimension represents the C coordinate, and you can also import these files with BioFMQ. I have again prepared a directory here, this one here, 3D Gray Custom, where we have stacks of TIFF files. You can see now in the metadata information we have P for position, CH for channel, and T for time. But there is no information about Z because Z is in the stack. If we load this directory, you can see that I get the same view here. I can again pick my prefixes for the metadata, P for position, CH for channel, T for time. And now in this case, I have nothing to pick for the Z position, so I'm just going to keep Z here. I can validate my files, and you can see now that the column for Z position has disappeared because Biofilm Q automatically identified the third dimension of the stack as the Z position. However, this only works with Z. If, for example, you make a mistake and you type pause instead of position, or you don't have a position in your sample at all, and you then click on validate all files. Missing metadata is detected. In this case, we would have to fill in an automatic value for the position because the position cannot be contained in the third dimension of the stack. So I can choose a value here, for example, one. And by clicking on OK, this value is going to be applied to all of the files. So here you can see I have position one for all of the files and it's marked red because this Metadata was not read from the file name, but instead it was something that we picked during the import. I can now go back, validate the files again, and again I get the position as read from the file name. I can now also import these custom tiffs. And again, I get this pop-up where I get the information which folders have been generated and I can choose to switch to the first directory or stay in the current one. In this case, let's stay in the current directory. So after this tutorial, you should be capable of importing your custom TIFF files into BioFMQ and continue processing, which will be explained in further tutorials.